Hello, welcome to the analytics-based investigation and automated response with Splunk and AWS. My name is Wissam Ali Ahmad, and I'm a lead solution architect with Splunk. Go over the agenda first. We're gonna go over the AWS security principles and best practices first, and then we'll talk about how you get that data, the security data from the security services in AWS from AWS into Splunk. Thirdly, we'll go over the how you maintain your healthy security posture of your workload with detections and investigation. And then uh, we'll end up talk about the automated response to these threats and how you can do that through uh, faster automation, through uh, orchestration and faster uh, response. So firstly, the AWS security principles around uh, identifying investigation and also responding to these threats in a AWS environment, especially with their large scale. When it comes to security on AWS, it's important to understand that security is a shared responsibility. AWS is responsible for security of the cloud. This includes the global infrastructure that AWS makes available to customers around the world and the software powering compute, storage, and database and networking. Additionally, AWS works with external compliance organizations to demonstrate the AWS portion of this responsibility uh, still meets the organization's security requirements. Now, on the other hand, customers then have responsibility to their security configuration in the cloud. This includes deciding how they are going to encrypt their data at rest and in transit, how they are going to protect their operating system ensuring the security of their platform and applications and ensuring that they ha uh, have the right protection and access controls of the data that they are storing in AWS. The customer portion of the shared responsibility model is also where partners like uh, fit, fit like Splunk. The model allows customers to be able to use the partner solutions that they want in order to help them meet their security goals. This squirrel where a partner like Splunk fits. Important here to understand the shared responsibility framework and the role in which Splunk plays for enhanced security and visibility of the security threats and data. So AWS handles security of the cloud and the customer is responsible for the security in the cloud. AWS provides various services and features to help customer data and applications secure. Splunk works with AWS to support customers to meet their security goals by providing end-to-end -end monitoring and visibility. So this is a kind of the ecosystem and then the catalog of all the different AWS uh, security services and solutions that covers the, uh, the old various cycles from uh, you know, identity uh, uh, and, and detections and infrastructure, the protection of the infrastructure, uh, and data protection as well, uh, and also incident response that you can do to respond to these threats. So these are all the different uh, you know, security solutions in AWS available today. Now, on, in order to scale, uh, scale securely on, with the superior visibility, right? That's important. With AWS, you can control where your data is stored and who can access it and what resources your organization is consuming at any given moment. So fine-grained identity and access controls combined with continuous monitoring for near real-time security information ensures that the right resources have the right access at all times, whether whatever your information is stored. So reduce risks uh, at the scale by, uh, by using your security automation and activity monitoring services to detect suspicious security events like configuration changes across your ecosystem. You can also uh, integrate uh, our services, the AWS services with existing solutions to support existing workflows, streamline operations and simplify compliance reporting. So that's the uh, visibility you gain and all the different use cases in with the these AWS security solutions. Now talking about automation, how you can automate and reduce risk with very integrated services. So when you automate the security tasks on AWS, that will enable you to be more secure by reducing the human configuration errors, giving your team more time to focus on other work critical to your, uh, to your um, 
business. This way you select from a wide variety of deeply integrated solutions that can combine with automate tasks in, in a novel way. So that way making it easy for your security team to work closely with the developer and operations team to create and deploy code faster and more securely. For example, by employing te techniques and technologies like machine learning, AWS can enable you to automatically and continuously discover and classify and protect sensitive data in, in AWS. And this is done with just a few clicks in the AWS console. You can also automate some infrastructure application security checks to continually enforce your security and compliance controls and help ensure uh, you know, with confidence and integrity what's and high, high, high availability at all times. So with automation in a hybrid environment with information management and security tools to easily integrate AWS as a seamless and secure extension of your on-prem and legacy system. So diving deeper here, why secure automation is important, right? So because it's got, with, when you automate for secure response, you now you're getting quicker response, you're getting consistency in the operational aspect and the response to security threats. You're also getting informed on decisions. You can have a better way to automate, uh, you know, uh, tracking and collaboration, uh, and 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 especially important these days because the skills for in the security world are very scarce. So basically, do more with less, um, and then uh, be able to quickly mitigate things. So where does security automation fit? Um, so talking about development in the development pipeline, the steady state operations and response so that's where we we want to make sure we have part of the development pipeline cycle there's we have security uh, uh, automation available to maybe continuously check the vulnerabilities or, or even patching and in, in within the, our, our code code so this way will enforce the checks and provide artifacts during this uh, pipeline and then uh, the instant response in this case is very important aspect of that of that once you look at the checks and you 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 make that part of your cycle you need to respond automatically so that those issues don't end up in production so let's talk about the life cycle right the foundational and all the layers how these layers and um, in aws for these security services a map into this life cycle right and on the identity side we have services like uh, you know, if you see here on the left side, services like the security hub, uh, uh, you know, um, AWS control tower, these uh, are services that will identify any issues in your environment. And then on the protect side, this is where you have uh, things like, um, you know, the cloud, um, uh, the cloud directory, be able to look at, um, you know, uh, AWS shield, that's where it's going to protect you, you know, make sure you have the right configurations, IAM. Uh, the firewall and 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 we'll have all that uh, on the protection side. Detection side, uh, AWS, uh, the Amazon Guard Duty is uh, you have to use and and the Macy are, can be used for the uh, for detection, and then and of course AWS Security Hub, and these will feed into the automation and investigation and hence the response. Um, in that case. Uh, you know, when we have things like CloudTrail and all that data, those these events alerts coming into uh, a response where you can generate like uh, from that, you know, the cloud formation aspect for, needed for that. So uh, the recover phase here is not just about the data, but it's also uh, about the ability to recover the entire infrastructure and apps extremely fast. So AWS services help take point in time snapshots and use the recover system and data, uh, things like AWS ops works and cloud formation, in this case, help the automation. So what are the use cases today that you can use to protect uh, your account and your resources and compliance, right? So these are the three essential use cases that we're gonna discuss when we talk together both about with Splunk and AWS. Uh, when I detect the AWS account, uh, that this the use case when I wanna protect my account, I wanna be able to see if my account has been compromised, detect any potential unauthorized uh, IAM users, and, and then they, and also take action, in this case, change the password for all the IAM users. 
uh, if that if that's that's another detection. Uh, on the compute resources case, I want to monitor any access to resources. I want to scan for vulnerabilities, look for alerts that I'm seeing or for like for example open ports. On the compliance side, I want to look at uh, AWS config. In this case, will help a lot with the uh, with the compliance checks and the, uh, the audit manager as well and security hub. Now, enter Splunk in AWS. So Splunk basically is that fully featured platform for, uh, for indexing data at high volume, whether structured or unstructured, and then be able to give you answers on that data and be able to analyze and search on that data and, and act on, on that data as well. As you see here from this diagram, uh, we have all the integrations, all this, um, you know, the AWS security services are all today integrated with, AWS, with the Splunk. And then those data sources on the left, they feed into in real time into Splunk. And then we have on, uh, AWS specific applications, searches and rules and add-ons to collect that data into, into the AWS. So now you can enrich your AWS data with information from your broader infrastructure and business applications and database with Splunk. Splunk is giving you that capability. Now you can take in AWS data and analyze all the layers you know, peeling the onion of, of not only your uh, AWS uh, data that you need for the, on the cloud level, but also what's running inside your environment. So how do we do that? Splunk makes your data visible and accessible and, and, and it quickly give you the answers that you need. And, and uh, Splunk is going to collect all that data for you in one place and you can search on that data in a very large scale. So Splunk collect from anywhere, search and analyze across all the data and rapidly deliver for you in real time the insights from the machine data. So today Splunk offers a suite of security solutions and all these solutions integrate with AWS today with all these critical AWS data sources here like GuardDuty, CloudTrail and Security Hub. And so uh, these are all solutions that are, that are scalable analytics based security solutions. Uh, and then uh, we'll analyze that you know, quickly from a whole suite of use cases and also user behavior analytics as well, and also our security orchestration automation, Phantom, are all integrate with AWS data sources. So let's talk about how that data is uh, collected and then ingested into Splunk. We're focused today on the, these four critical data sources from AWS, a guard duty, a VPC flow logs for network, cloud trail for changes, and security hub for general for all these the security alerts that you, you know that AWS can see uh, in, your, in your environment. So what is the typical data flow and use case? So this is this is intended to show the data. This is an example how we would highlight that data, those key data sources uh, flowing into, into Splunk. Uh, as you can see here, if I want to detect my changes, my network configuration, my DNS, all these are fed into, as we know today, into Guard Duty already. Guard UD sends that into uh, to Security Hub, and Security Hub also is collecting compliance checks as well. So all these sent triggers what they call findings. Those findings are actually sent via CloudWatch event, and there's two ways to get those into Splunk. For investigation and detection, which is the Splunk SIM product, Splunk Enterprise Security, you have two ways to get that data collected uh, with Amazon Event uh, Bridge today, you can get that directly by an HTTP uh, protocol directly into Splunk. Another way is through Kinesis uh, Firehose. We have integrations with the uh, getting the CloudWatch data, the CloudTrail data, and, and VPC flow logs. All these are fed into uh, Kinesis and also directly into Splunk Enterprise Security through the add-on, the AWS add-on. Now, for orchestration automation, is Splunk Phantom is the product, and also there's way to get that data directly from uh, CloudWatch events into Phantom through the, uh, through the SQS um, uh, integration. Now let's talk about use cases for how you can use that data into Splunk Enterprise Security. Um, today, if I want to look at account protection, right? This is how I'm gonna map essentially my data sources from AWS and how they will trigger the, the proper uh, detections in ES, which are basically correlation searches. 
so in that case, for a cloud trail events, these are mapped into what we call confirmation model. And that's basically around change analysis and authentication. So if you have yes, you'll see those uh, that data and, and a triggering um, in, and not only in dashboards, but also you can see that data uh, triggering notables based on the authentication model. And, and with this way, you could detect you know, issues with uh, user logins and so on. And today we have uh, detections as well that are keep updating it uh, uh, with the content update. We have our team who keep uh, continuously releases updates of these detections uh, over time. Amazon Guard Duty, of course, is another source of, of the of the data uh, and events related to account activities. And these trigger triggers are mapped into what we call alert model. And then those were triggered again, notables in Splunk Enterprise Security around authorized, author, unauthorized access, and maybe some recon activity and all those. And then you can use that uh, those notables in ES to start investigation and then look at all the other data sources that you have in your infrastructure that you already ingested in Splunk Enterprise Security to find out where the root cause of what else going on. Splunk is gonna help you answer questions like, what else is going on in my environment? Where is this happening? Second use case is around compute resources. How do I defend my compute resources? So I bring that data again from AWS into Splunk Enterprise Security around, let's say, uh, a network activity, right? So I have the, my VPC flow logs, and those are mapped into the add-on into the data source for VPC flow and then to the network traffic and traffic common information model. And then I can detect things like port scanning, uh, spike, uh, spike in, in, in uh, traffic, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, other, other areas around ports. Now, uh, CloudTrail as well have, has, um, uh, you know, events that map to change analysis. In that case, I can th see things around EC2 instances configuration being changed, uh, modified by certain users. And as well, also guard duty in this case includes these, uh, you know, recon actions around EC2 and, and do these map also into alerts. Now on the compliance side, we have security hub. These are also map into, uh, into, an, into a CIM model and that's work that we're continuing improving on uh, that's coming more on that. And then with that case, in this case, the findings are triggering, you know, uh, notables around data protections and, and configurations and, and, and uh, compliance. Uh, CloudTrail as well includes authentication here in this case, uh, you know, things like passwords and, 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 and other, um, uh, you know, access uh, control and so on. Now, this is the diagram that, that we're illustrating how we scale the architecture uh, with all these events we're talking about how you can have this push architecture to allow for the high volume of data getting into Splunk through the uh, firehose, in this case, and through what we call uh, HTTP event collector that will be load balanced across multiple uh, in indexers. And this is very important for that when you have to scale to large volumes of data and the ability to have uh, you know, actions based, based on, that, on, the, on that data uh, directly, uh, you know, into Splunk Enterprise Security and also Phantom as well. So now let's talk about the automation side. I detected, I investigated my issues. I detected them in Splunk Enterprise Security. Now I want to take action. I want to be able to automate and take a decision uh, based on these data sources. This is a, this is another uh, view of how we can look at the that cycle of uh, a typical incident response. Um, I start with the, uh, the de detection, of course. In this case, my detection could be triggered, as we mentioned, the alerts coming in from findings uh, from guard duty or, 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 or a security hub. And then I, I can get that visibility on these, um, on the, on these alerts uh, uh, by, by having them coming in through security hub uh, and directly into Splunk Enterprise Security. That's where the analytics is happening. So I'm, I'm doing additional correlations in, in there. I'm, I can modify and, and customize my alerts to detect high fidelity uh, uh, you know, alerts so I can act on them. So that's the picture when uh, coming in into Splunk Enterprise Security. And now how do I respond? I can respond either directly uh, 
you know, enterprise security by taking action, or I can send that trigger another playbook in Phantom. So the cycle is alerts from security hub, triggers notables, which are based on correlations, and those trigger a playbook in Phantom. And then the Phantom playbook will include actions uh, that will automate uh, you know, things like the, you know, finding a, 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 the IOC, the indicator of compromise from another source, and then making decision where uh, based on the score of the IOC, uh, do I want to act on, on this uh, uh, threat? And usually the action is to, uh, be, to maybe uh, quarantine uh, an EC2 instance or, or, or uh, disable an account or change permissions. So that's why the actions on this side you see is going outbound back into AWS to make the changes. So let's take let's go let's uh, walk you through a typical cloud store use case. This is in this case this is uh, automation automation based on the security hub finding. So uh, the first step here is the observe step. You know uh, we're observing we're we're looking at uh, what the alerts coming in. In this case, security hub detects there's a potential threat <clears throat> with the exposed Amazon EC2 instance. Uh, the security hub triggers a finding uh, as a CloudWatch event. The CloudWatch event is, uh, in this case, uh, forwards the findings uh, through SMS SQS directly into Phantom. There's a Phantom app for Security Hub that exists today that collects those events directly into Phantom. <clears throat> and then the playbook is executed. The playbook in this case is first step is to investigate. So the automation step to investigate includes finding the risk level, um, you know, look at the EC2 instance configuration, collect the host activity, get connect, uh, connectivity probing instances. For example, look at the, the IP reputation of the IP, the geolocation, and then uh, create a service ticket so you can now document all the findings that you did uh, based on your uh, investigation. And then let either a human make a decision, or if it's very critical, but the, based on, the, on the, all this information that we collected, if we determine that it's very critical, we act, we can automate the next step, which is the step three, in this case, I can call another playbook to isolate the instance. In this case, we, you know, we modify the security group and that's how the isolation happened. So that's a typical example where, you know, getting that data directly into Phantom and then take action on, on that through the automated response. So key takeaway here is that I wanna be able to, you know, understand uh, the, the key security relevant data in AWS services, right? We have all the data we have between uh, from uh, looking at change, authentication, authorization data, uh, uh, compute uh, uh, information happening, alerts from uh, Security Hub and Guard Duty. That's all the key data that already we have collected in Splunk. And then also, be it, uh, you know how do how you how do I become familiar with getting that data to Splunk? I can I need an add-on. I need to enable my and the proper permissions on the on the accounts to collect the data, and 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 then what what uh, integration points I, I can use between EventBridge or security uh, or Firehose, and also we went over the use cases right. How I typically detect things around account activity, compute and configurations, compliance. All those exist today with Splunk Enterprise Security content that we have uh, to, to, to do these de de detections. Now, now, on the response side, uh, we have playbooks. We have uh, apps in Phantom, which is our security orchestration automation um, uh, solution. And that's where you can automate uh, you know, uh, the, the, not only the uh, investigation, but also the response and taking the action on a mitigation, mitigative action. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.